Now, I don't know about you, but it feels like there's still quite a lot to think about going into the Game Week 36 deadline. So here is a video summarising my final thoughts. So I know I'm not alone in this position. I am a Solly March owner. And unfortunately, beyond even his unfortunate injury, he wasn't even starting for them. So I was somewhat half tempted to get rid of them going into this game week anyway. So part of this video, I'm going to talk through who, some of the players who I think are good, solid replacements for Solly March. Some of them quite obvious and a lot of people are talking about it, and some of them, well, maybe a bit more rogue. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so my first player is going to come as no surprise. It's the perfect sideways move, although for me it's a little bit boring, and if I'm trying to make up some points, I might be looking elsewhere. But Alexis McAllister for me, if you're certainly looking to protect your position in terms of rankings and points, he's the guy to bring into your team. It's on the penalties and free kicks of Brighton, which means regardless really of the opposition, if they win a penalty, he's probably going to get some attacking returns for you. One thing I would say, though, is that his fixtures are tough. Like Arsenal and Newcastle in game week 36 are two of the toughest fixtures you can ask for, and they're away from home. Could you compare him to maybe a single game week player this week who's got just one strong fixture, for example, and there might be a clue there as to another player I'm going to talk about. Maybe that's a way to go about it, especially if you're looking to chase rank. Like, how likely do you think McAllister is to score Arsenal way, Newcastle way? I'm not massively sure. His underlying numbers, though, are really, really strong, and they've picked up certainly um, since the World Cup when he's been playing that more advanced role. 0.55 expected returns per 90 is right up there with some of the best Arsenal midfielders. The likes of Saka and Martinelli have been holding that kind of number all season long. So that says the calibre of player that McAllister is at the moment. But for me, you know, it's the boring move. I think God knows what his um, ownership's going to be. It's going to be well and above 60% in my opinion with everyone selling Solly March and going straight for him. So for me, it could be an opportunity to go a bit differential and pick someone else. Now, one player you could consider bringing in to be a bit different is Joe Willock. At 4.7 million, he sits at 0.8 million cheaper than Alexis McAllister, which could allow you to upgrade other positions in your team. For me, you could go for any of the Newcastle midfielders, to be honest, like to Joe Linton, Jacob Murphy, etc. But I think Willock is the strongest. And looking at the expected goal involvement over the last five game weeks, Willock leads the way. He's got four expected goal involvements. And then second place is Murphy with 2.9. So for me, I think that shows that Willock is the strongest. The only real doubt, of course, is his minutes. Is he going to play as many minutes as McAllister does? I think he's looked really good in the Newcastle shirt recently. I think he'll probably start both of those games. And the important thing for me to suggest is that he's got a better double game week, in my opinion, in 36 than Brighton does. Leeds away is a really strong fixture comparing that to Arsenal away that Brighton have in their first one. And I know, obviously, Newcastle and Brighton are playing each other um, in the second fixture. But I think with St. James's Park being a bit of a fortress for, for Newcastle, I know they've just lost to Arsenal, but they have been strong there all, all season long. I think it's, you know, the fixtures, at least in 36, are better. Obviously, he doesn't have the double in 37, but other teams do. So maybe that's something to think about. For me, I think he's a genuine alternative for Alexis McAllister, especially if you've only got like three game weeks of the season left. For me, if you're looking to play a differential, he might be your guy. Now, I can't really say that Bruno Fernandes is really a differential. I imagine, well, I've seen quite a lot of people have him in their teams already. But if you don't, and you're on sitting on two free transfers, I think it was popular, at least in Game Week 35. There wasn't a, a really strong transfer for people to be making. There wasn't an obvious move. So I think quite a lot of you might be sitting on two free transfers with the ability to slightly restructure your team. And I really like Bruno Fernandes. Unfortunately, I just I can't make it work in my team. I just don't have... I don't have a defender expensive enough to sell to get the budget for Bruno Fernandes, but maybe if you're on someone like Trent Alexander-Arnold or, or something like that, or have some spare cash in the bank, maybe you could go for Bruno Fernandes. My point being for that, I think the Wolves at home fixture in 36 is arguably equal, if not stronger, than McAllister, who has Arsenal away and Newcastle away. Then looking at game week 37, we've got Bournemouth away, Chelsea at home, those are two really strong fixtures for Man United and his underlying numbers are better. He's also on penalties and whilst I know McAllister seems to be pretty nailed in the Brighton team, you've got to think Bruno Fernandes is literally the most nailed player in the Premier League at the moment. Whenever he's fit, even when he's injured, he plays 90 minutes for Man United. So I don't really think you can worry about Bruno being um, substituted or benched or, or whatever. 
So for me, on paper at least, regardless of value, I think the best replacement is Rashford. <laughs> it's funny I was saying that on a Bruno Fernandes section, but hear me out. I think pretty much everyone's got Rashford in their team. If you don't have Rashford in your team, I'd prioritise him over Bruno Fernandes. But I'm, I'm you know, making a, an assumption that most of you already have Rashford. And if you do, I think Bruno Fernandes is a great option to consider with two free transfers. And then one final big decision we've got to make this game week is captaincy. And what I've done here is I've shown the top players this game week for expected points according to Draft Hound. Isaac is leading the way in terms of Draft Hound expected points in their algorithm. And in second place is Callum Wilson. I think a lot of people will be weighing up um, who they should captain this game week, right? It's a double game week for Newcastle. Their players are leading the expected points chart. So for me, it makes sense to captain one of them. I think personally, Izak is the strongest. He's got a better injury record than Callum Wilson. And just for me, he's going to play more minutes. It might not necessarily be down the middle, but we've seen the impact he can have on the left-hand side in that amazing dribble move that he didn't get the assist for the end of. And also, I know Callum Wilson, well, there's been some chats. He's got a podcast that he does with Mikel Antonio, and he just seems like he is the most selfish player in history over taking penalties. So I've got a feeling he will take the penalty if one comes up when both of them are on the pitch. But just in general, I think there's less risk with Izak in terms of minutes and injuries than there is with Callum Wilson. I feel like with Wilson, you, if you're picking him for a double game, you're going to be worried, or at least in the second fixture, if he makes it through the first one, that he's going to pick up the injury. And you've obviously still got another couple of weeks after this game week finishes. So you're going to be worried about having Wilson in your team and a potential injury there because I'd suggest whoever you know you either bring into your team this week of that lot you're going to be wanting to keep them for the end of the season so maybe if you're considering a transfer in for one of these guys i'd say isaac is probably the best and that's the end of the video a little short one today but just summarizing my final thoughts ahead of the deadline stream if you want to check that out you can set your reminders on my channel it's the first live stream that comes up i'll be going live at 8 30 a.m on saturday morning right the way up until the game week deadline and you can see the transfers decisions that i make there if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like rating and subscribe to the Golden Gold channel down below and I'll see you Saturday morning.